Hey everybody, Venominus here. It's been a little while. I've been busy. But uh, this is something I wanted to cover. And uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. The mysterious virus that protects against monkeypox. The vaccine being used to prevent monkeypox is made from a lost virus that no one has ever been able to identify. How has that? How has this happened? And could it still exist in the wild? At the turn of the 19th century, a bizarre medical panic swept across London. Informative pamphlets were distributed. Alarmist books were authored. Dubious treatments emerged. The public was warned en masse that it was in peril. An urgent risk of morphing into cow humans. <laughs> yes, the chimera agenda was uh, alive and well back then, too. A small group of controversial doctors had been whipping up concerns about a pioneering medical procedure which included taking a virus thought to infect cattle and using it to protect people against its cousin smallpox. The technique was named vaccination, after the Latin vaccinus, meaning of a cow, and the early evidence suggested that it was extraordinarily effective, protecting 95% of people from infection, which usually killed around 30% of its victims, and permanently disfigured most of the rest. There was even an early hope that it might eventually vanquish the disease forever. But it didn't take long for the first ever vaccine skeptics to pop up. Oh, those anti-vaxxers. In particular, these breakaway physicians were convinced that the bestial humor, the cowpox virus, had no place within the human body. Among the more ludicrous claims was a suggestion that vaccinated children had begun developing bovine features, such as the blotches on dairy cows, or that it risked them eventually having oxen-like thoughts. One prominent advocate suggested that vaccinated women might f start fancying bulls. <laughs> the thing is, the early vaccine skeptics had got it all wrong, of course. The new technique did not convey the essence of bovine into innocent people cowpox was just a normal virus, and over the coming centuries, it would drive smallpox to extinction. But it may also never have had anything to do with cows at all. In fact, to, to this day, no one knows where the virus that eradicates smallpox ultimately came from, and yet the mysterious, mystery microbe is still being used, including the vaccines currently being deployed against monkeypox which has now been declared a global health emergency by the WHO. Um, here's a little side piece here. <clears throat> Such was the frenzy around the first vaccines that in one piece of perfectly serious anti-vaccine propaganda from 1802, a terrifying monster cow with a jaw like a great white shark, pockmarks on its body and creepy twisting tail is being fed baskets full, basketfuls of babies. These seem to go through the digestive, its digestive system, mostly unharmed, but as they tr tumble out of its behind, it becomes clear that they have acquired horns. Right. Moloch-like, hey? Actually, there's a picture here, too. Scroll down to it real quick. I've seen this one before. Dumping babies in there. Shoveling babies out with horns. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> funny stuff. This is a fairly long article, so I got a bunch of parts highlighted. So, for more than a century, the smallpox vaccine was widely assumed by the scientific community to be made from cowpox. This is the explanation still found in many websites and curriculums worldwide. But in 1939, nearly 150 years after vaccination was invented, molecular tests revealed that it's not. More recently, genetic sequencing has confirmed these findings. It said the vaccines that were used to eradicate smallpox and those used today against monkeypox are based on an unknown virus that no one has been able to identify. A ghost pathogen that has only ever been found in a vaccine form. Hmm. Very interesting. Despite an 83-year-old search, no one knows how, why, or precisely when this imposter appeared in the smallpox vaccine or whether it still exists in the wild. Only one thing is clear. 
Millions who lived through the reign of smallpox owe their lives to its existence. Without it, the current monkeypox outbreak is likely to have spread even more rapidly. Of course, we all know how it's spread in today's monkeypox, and that could easily be stopped sans vaccination. But I digress. Uh, so yeah. Goes on, blah blah blah, about the origins. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Moloch. Where's my next part? When a team sequenced more recent smallpox vaccine, they found that around this time they underwent a transformation. Rather than being composed primarily of horse box, they were mostly based on mystery virus found in vaccines today. The core sequence that used to be horse box until 1930 30 changed to modern vaccinia, which is also an orthopox virus sequence, but we don't know the origin of that virus. It's not cowpox, says Esparza. How did it replace a previous vaccine? What might it be made from? And could it still exist in a, out in the wild? A banished virus. In Esparza's view, the sudden jump from one kind of smallpox vaccine to another likely comes down to the way vaccines were distributed. For the first hundred years of vaccines, they were kept from arm to arm in humans, says Esparza. In 19, eight, or 1860, scientists in Italy and France introduced the animal vaccine. Instead of passing the virus from human to human to human, they found that they could put it back in cow into cows and maintain it in cows. Eventually, this system of mass production expands to include other animals, including sheep, horses, and donkeys. At some point, a virus from an unknown animal started being used as a smallpox vaccine. There are no rec records of who did this, or when, why, or how they went about it, but it's, impo but it's possible it was just an accident. Someone harvested what they thought was horse or cowpox from a farm animal, when it was actually a random, unidentified imposter. It worked well, no one, so no one noticed. Sometime after 1930, the mystery virus became the first common vi vaccine, and by the mid-20th century, there were hundreds of different versions circulating across the globe. Then in 1966, the WHO announced the smallpox eradication campaign and chose just six vaccine, six vaccine strains that would be used to achieve this. With each passing decade, the dominance of the unknown virus became more entrenched. Hmm, and sometime in 1930, huh? Yeah, when they were, uh, you know, messing around with those kind of things. Hmm. One, one's wheels begin to turn on that. Though the emergence of smallpox or monkeypox might seem to suggest that pox viruses are thriving for a long time, many were highly endangered, and smallpox may not be the only one that has now vanished. It's thought the horsepox once caused regular outbreaks in parts of Europe. It may even have been common, but it hasn't been identified in the wild since 1976, when horses began falling ill with lesions and fever-like symptoms in Mongolia. It's thought that improved husbandry practices and better diagnosis may have driven it to extinction. Horsepox basically disappeared from Europe at the beginning of the 20th century, says Esparza, who explains that the mystery virus used in modern smallpox vaccines might have met the same fate. We have speculated about that possibility. Uh, fresh use. In fact, today the mystery virus is more useful than ever. Monkey, monkeypox is a close relative of smallpox, usually found in tropical central Africa, where it tends to infect rodents and non-human primates. It's harder to catch than its cousin, and is mostly transferred by close contact with bodily fluids or contaminated objects such as bedding. Unlike smallpox, monkeypox is rarely deadly, but there have been reports of more severe cases which resemble sexually transmitted infections. It usually causes a fever, followed by lesions, lesions, which may be filled with pus and can be extremely painful. 
that's uh, our latest uh, duckling. He's in a box in my room here, chilling and squawking. So don't mind him. He is an incubator baby. So yeah, interesting stuff, no doubt. Oh yeah, there's a little bit more I can read. The monkeypox virus was first discovered in 1970, and until recently, infections were mostly confined to Africa. But in May of 2022, it began to creep across the globe. An unprecedented spread. To slow it down, many countries have ordered millions of doses of two vaccines. Both are directly descended from the same enigmatic virus that became the dominant smallpox vaccine in 1930s. First up, there's the Genius, or Genius as I call it, vaccine, developed by biotechnology company Bavarian Nordic. This new, safer version of the old smallpox vaccine was developed by accident in the 1960s when a scientist noticed that his stock of Turkish strain vaccinia, which he had given had been growing in chicken embryos for years, had mutated. Modified vaccinia virus Ankara. Ankara is a city in Turkey. I looked it up. Which was later developed into the genius genius vaccine had become so altered that though it could still make more copies of itself in chicken embryos, it had lost the ability to replicate in humans. Researchers quickly realized this would make it safer to use for immunizations. The older version is thought to have saved 150 to 200 million lives between 1980 and 2018 alone. But in rare cases, it can lead to infections that spread through the body. This new vaccine represented a less risky alternative. Initially, MVA was not widely used. In the 1960s, it wasn't yet clear if the vaccine was as effective as the previous version, so it was mostly given to immunocompromised people as a bonus shot. But experiments in other animals and army personnel have since suggested it's likely to work. So today, it's in high demand. Oh, how lovely for those army personnel. They get to be the the guinea pigs. <coughs> the other vaccine, ADCAM 2000, is a less favored option in the current monkeypox outbreak. First developed in the early 2000s as an alternative to the vaccine strains used to eradicate, small, eradicate smallpox, it has been stockpiled by several countries around the globe, including US and UK, for emergencies such as a smallpox attack by terrorists. Well, they are using it. It's not the favorable choice, but they're using it, and I did a whole thing about the risk factors of using that one, and you can check out that in Trying to Make a Monkey Out of You Part 2 on the, in my YouTube channel there. So yeah, basically, interesting stuff about the, the hoaxines. Now, it mentioned horse box, right? I just want to do a brief, brief touch-up on the fact that they have synthetically recreated the horse box uh, a while back. Step-by-step -step horse box study stokes dual-use controversy. We, have, we haven't described anything that isn't well-known in the field. That's how David Evans, Ph.D., Professor of Medical Bi Microbiology and Immunology of the University of Alberta, defends his late, latest study involving potentially dangerous research published recently in PLOS One. The study, titled Construction of an Infectious Horse Box Virus Vaccine from Chemically Synthesized DNA Fragments, has caused a stir because it offers a step-by-step -step account of how Evans and his team recreated the horse box virus, HPX, using synthesized DNA fragments based on H HPX and vaccinia virus genomes. The virus was then used to develop a novel vaccinia vaccine tested in mice. Pathway to smallpox? The work generated criticism from global biosecurity experts who say that offering a manual for recreating an orthopox virus in an inherently dangerous pre -proposition, proposition, they fear being that Evans and his team have offered rogue states, terrorists, or others a how-to guide to recreating the world's most dangerous orthopox virus, smallpox. This is the first time an orthopox virus has been synthesized, which means there are now a new pathway for redeveloping the smallpox virus, even though it's, er it's eradicated in nature, said Greg Koblenz, 
PhD, the director of the biodefense graduate program at George Mason University in an interview. Besides laboratory samples maintained by the United States and Russia, smallpox cannot be found in the world. Elizabeth Cameron, PhD, the vice president of global biological policy and programs at the Nuclear Threat Initiative, NTI, remember them? issued a statement calling for dialogue to develop clear norms for reducing the biological risks posed by such research. It's clear that the capability to create and modify biological agents is outpacing governmental oversight and public debate. Oh, here he goes again. So yeah, I covered that back in Coronavirus pandemic part five, something wicked this way comes. Talking about scientists created a family member of the smallpox virus. It is harmfully human it's not harmful to humans, but the new finding suggests it's possible for humans to make the deadly smallpox virus in the laboratory. Blah blah blah. It basically says what it just said. Project only costs a hundred thousand and a total of six months. <laughs> they could do it so much faster now, people. They also uh, recreated the polio virus using mail order DNA, but that was a while back too. Here's from the here's a little quote from the bio the the statement for the record worldwide threat assessment of the U.S. Intelli intelligence committee biotechnology rapid advances of biotechnology tech sorry slow down <laughs> rapid. Advances in biotechnology, including gene editing, synthetic biology, and neuroscience, are likely to present new economic, military, ethical, and regulatory, regulatory challenges worldwide as governments struggle to keep pace. These technologies hold great promise for advances in precision medicine, agriculture, and manufacturing, but they also introduce risks, such as the potential, potential for adversaries to develop novel biological warfare fair agents, threaten food security, and enhance or degrade human performance. So you double-edged sword, people. Let's talk a little bit, a little bit about the monkeypox. Sorry, I forgot to scroll back up after I was done. So this is from a 2018 uh, article here on the frontiers in public health. Emergence of monkeypox is the most important orthopox virus infection in humans. <clears throat> monkeypox is an emerging zoonotic disease recognized as the most important orthopox virus infection in humans in the smallpox post-eradication era. The clinical presentation of monkeypox is similar to the one of smallpox. The case fatality rate of monkeypox is 10%, lies between their case fatality rate of variola major, 30%, and variola minor, 1%. The disease is endemic in the Democratic uh, Republic of the Congo, but other countries of Central and West Africa either reported cases of monkeypox in humans or circulation in wildlife. The disease was also imported once into the USA. The disease has always been considered rare and self-limiting. However, recent sporadic reports suggest otherwise. Unfortunately, the collected data is limited, dispersed, and often incomplete. Therefore, the objective of this review is to trace all important, sorry, all reported human monkeypox outbreaks and relevant immunological information. The frequency and geographical spread of human monkeypox cases have increased in recent years, and there are huge gaps in our understanding of the diseases, emergences, uh, epidemiology, and ecology. The monkeypox virus is considered a high threat pathogen causing a disease of public health importance. Mm, yeah. Therefore, there is an urgent need to focus on building surveillance capabilities or capacities which will provide vulnerable information for de de designing appropriate prevention, preparedness, and response activities. <clears throat> so, introduction. Blah, 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 blah. Monkeypox can infect a taxonomically wide range of ma mammalian species, but the natural host is unknown. The virus has only been isolated twice from a wild animal a rope squirrel in the Dem Democratic Republic of Congo, and a Sudi Mangabe in Ivory Coast. Transmissions is believed to occur via saliva, respiratory excretions, or contact with lesions, uh, exudate, or crust material. Viral shedding 
biofeces may represent another exposure source. Mm, get your bio, uh, sewer surveillance people. The clinical picture of monkeypox closely resembles the one of the smallpox, but the major difference dis distinguishing monkeypox from smallpox is the lymph node enlargement that occurs early, often in the onset of a fever. So there's a distinction there. Uh, let's scroll down. Two genetic clades of monkeypox virus have been characterized, including the West African and Central African clade. These two clades are geographically separated and have defined epidemiological and clinical differences. The West African clade demonstrates a case fatality rate 1%, and no human to human transmission was ever documented. So that's from the, the West African clade. In comparison, the Congo Basin clade also known as the Central African clade, shows a CFR up to 11% and documented human-to-human -human transmission up to six subsequential, sub subsequential, sorry, sequential, wait, <laughs> I don't know how to say the word, sequential, there you go, <laughs> events was observed, <laughs> only six times, six, there you go, so zero for the one clade and only six times in the other clade. And what has this recent one been doing? Was it up to 21,000 now or something like that? Hmm. The threat would increase if there would be a virul virulence increase, both naturally or through genetic engineering. The virus spill into more widely distributed taxa or an introduction into other continents. Consequently, MPXV belongs to the biosafety la level 3 category, the high threat biodefense category in the EU, and is on the list of select agents in the USA. Uh, that was about, yeah, that was it for that. Because then it just goes into, like, details of cases and stuff like that. Which, you know, could be interesting on its own, but we don't want to spend all day here. So, um... You know how they, they use the Genios, Genius vaccine in the U.S. Well, there's a couple other names you should be aware of. In Canada, they use the I'm immune. It's okay, people. I'm immune. I'm immune. I'm immune. It's the same. Uh, and in, uh, sorry, in the Europe, in places in Europe, they use I'm Vonex. But here's the kicker. They're all the same vaccine. So I'm immune is also known as MVABN, Genius, and I'm a I'm a Vex. So it's all the same ones. So there's only two vaccines out there. There's the AdCam 2000 and then the this one by Bavarian Nordic. Let's move on. But don't you worry folks. Moderna's on the case and they're working on some mRNA technology. Some vaccines in the works, people. Get excited. Something different about this virus. New monkeypox symptoms differ from past outbreaks. Here's a, what to look for. Symptoms can include pus filled blisters and proxitis. What is that? Read it to me. P R O C T I T I S. Oh, that's helpful. Proxitis. Proctitis. 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 We'll call it proctitis. A painful rectal inflammation. Oh, that's just terrible. More than 22,000 confirmed cases worldwide. The World Health Organization has declared the current monkeypox outbreak a global health emergency as of July 28th. There were nearly 5,000 reported cases in the U.S. alone, according to the U.S. Centers of Disease Control, blah, blah, blah. Monkeypox has been endemic in Western and Central Africa for years, but it's spread to 20, in 2022 to dozens of countries where it's not usually reported. Most notably, the U.S., the U.K., and Spain as public health officials concern. That's especially true as monkeypox is presenting somewhat different, differently than in past outbreaks including painful rashes, blisters, and open sores. Right now, most cases in the U.S. are among men who sleep with men, though health officials are clear that anyone can get monkeypox through close skin contact. But they're not! Here are the symptoms to look for, including early signs of monkeypox, has now 
uh, has the current outbreak is presenting differently than previous ones for more blah 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 what is monkeypox well you already know that so what are the early signs of monkeypox while many people won't realize they have monkeypox until the telltale rash emerges some early signs can include flu-like symptoms fever headache tiredness sore throat muscle ache swollen lymph nodes symptoms of monkeypox are similar to but usually uh, much milder than those of smallpox, which the WHO declared eliminated in 1980. What are the symptoms of monkeypox? Monkeypox can present as a rash or individual sores that look like pimples or blisters and can appear uh, almost anywhere on the body, including the hands, face, chest, growing inside of the mouth or anus. Lesions can be flat or raised and full of clear or yellowish fluid and will eventually dry up and fall off. How are current monkeypox symptoms different from previous outbreaks? CDC Director Rochelle Walensky said in a June briefing that historically, after reporting flu-like symptoms, a characteristic often diffuse rash appears on uh, multiple sides of the body, often on the face, arms, and hands. But in more recent cases in the West, some pa patients have developed a more localized rash, often around the genital or anus. That is quite painful. Others are developing blemishes that resemble a pimple or blister as opposed to widespread rash and flu-like symptoms may never emerge. Hmm. That's interesting. Some patients in the U.S. have reported proctitis, a painful inflammation of the rectal lining that can cause diarrhea, bleeding, and discharge, according to the Mayo Clinic, as well as a continuous feeling of needing to use the bathroom. The CDC has warned that the differing presentation can cause monkeypox to be misdiagnosed or missed altogether. How long do the symptoms last? The illness typically lasts 2 to 4 weeks, though the incubation period ranges from 5 to 21 days. According to the CDC, that means people will most likely develop symptoms within 3 weeks of being exposed. Unlike COVID-19, monkeypox is generally understood not to be contagious during the incubation period. Generally, you could spread monkeypox until the sores heal and a new layer of skin forms. <clears throat> Transmission can occur via direct skin-to-skin -skin contact with lesions, scratches, scabs, or fluids. It can also be transmitted by touching surfaces, clothing, uh, or other objects used by an infected person. Good thing we had all that programming for us to wipe down our groceries, right, uh, Sanjay Gupta? <laughs> Uh, contact with respiratory secretions can also spread the virus, though it's not known yet if transmission can occur by semen or vaginal fluid. So yeah, there's the end of that one. So it's different, huh? And it's more spreadable. Let's just uh, take another refresher on the NTI's timeline here, their scenario timeline. Remember them, strengthen global systems to prevent and respond, respond to high-consequence biological threats. The 2020, 2021 Tabletop Exercise was conducted in partnership with the Munich Security Conference. What was the virus they uh, scenarioed here? Well, if you, uh, you could probably guess it, I'm sure, if you don't know already. It was the monkeypox. In March 2021, NTI conducted a tabletop exercise on reducing high-consequence biological threats, the third in a series of annual collaborations between NTI and the Munich Security Conference. The exercise ex examined gaps in national and international biosecurity and pandemic preparedness architectures and explored opportunities to improve capabilities to prevent and respond to high-consequence biological events. The exercise included 19 senior leaders and experts from across Africa, the Americas, and Asia, and Europe decades of combined experience in public health, biotechnology, industry, international security, and philanthropy. In, in, uh, exercise scenario developed in consultation with technical and policy experts, the exercise scenario portrayed a deadly global pandemic involving an unusual strain of monkeypox virus that first emerges in the fictional country of Brianna and eventually spreads globally. Later in the exercise, the scenario reveals that the intentional outbreak was caused by a terrorist attack using a pathogen engineered in a laboratory with inadequate biosecurity and 
I'm sorry, biosafety and biosecurity provisions and weak oversight. Now, <clears throat> I'm not saying that this is a biological thing. It could be just your brother's grim. But since we're going comparing it to the scenario here, it's it's pretty on point so far. They were they admitted with the monkeypox that they have slacked and what could have been prevented is now become a global health emergency or whatever. So it's quite in line with this right now so far. The exercise scenario concludes with more than 3 billion cases of 270 million fatalities globally as part of the scenario development process and TI conducted a virtual consultation with experts in December 2020. The exercise was designed for participants to discuss blah blah blah. So yeah, there's a bunch of names. Here's the scenario design summary. May 15th. Remember the the monkeypox emerged what was the 16th or 17th of May? The infection started. That's your timeline right there. <clears throat> if we go to June 5th of 2022, monkeypox outbreaks in Brynia, 1,421 cases, 4 deaths. No, okay, so, as of July or whatever, whenever I did that last video, it was up to 1,600 cases, globally given, and there were 5 deaths. So, I mean, even though this is located to one area, similar to the number, it's still, was it, wait, this is 16,000. Well, okay, it's more. It's more in the real scenario, right? It's more, but still, the death count is fairly close. Now, not till January 10th of 2023 do we see things explode in the scenario. A3 countries affected, 70 million cases, and 1.3 million deaths. Monkeypox virus <clears throat> engineered to be vaccine-resistant. National responses, effects of early action. Intentional supply chain challenges. Moving to May 10th of 2023. 40, 480 million cases, 27 million deaths. Revelation of terror group. Origins, infiltration of civilian biolab. Hmm... Civilian bio lab. So those um, those people that do CRISPR in their in their in their garages, right? Kind of a deal. So some kind of radical group, maybe a right wing group, like they've been hinting at for the past couple of years here. That's that could be the scenario that we see. So, uh, sorry, the the live action scenario. December first of twenty twenty three. Scenario, 3.2 billion cases, 271 million deaths. Global difference in national response contribute to significantly variable outcomes. So yeah, I'm not saying that this is a bioterror, uh, bioengineered virus. I'm not even saying it's not a Brother Grimm's virus. I'm just saying... If we're going by the story, it's matching up with their little scenario here, so you could take it either way. It could be <coughs> foreshadowing of what is hap what's happening now was foreshadowed. Or it could be a bunch of hype, like with the you know, 201 thing. A bunch of hype, because we all know the numbers didn't hit like they said it would. So it's the same kind of thing, hyping it up. But at the same time, I see it being... a possibility of a real thing, you know what I mean? At this point, we're still just going to have to watch the circus. But in the meantime, we got nothing to worry about. As long as, you know, we keep living healthy the way we do. Not living a degenerate life. I want to wrap it up now. Thank you all so much for your time and attention. It's appreciated as always. If you like the content I'm putting out, please like and share. Get it out there. Get other people to see it. See if they like it. And if you want to support the work I do, there's links in the description below to do so. With that said, this is Venomous supporting from the Brave New World, and I'll catch you all next time.
Are you talking to me?